Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Project Ozone. Now today, uh, I think we're going to get a bit more done than we did last episode, um, as far as progress and everything. Um, first up, we're going to go by Uranus, because I spent a very, very long time there, <laughs> between episodes. Um, a very long time, because, if you recall, I mentioned that, that I wanted to build like kind of like an icy prison there. Um, and I did, I did in fact do that. Let's go ahead and teleport over there. Um, and we're, gonna go, we're gonna go ahead on out of the base for just a minute. Um, right there is our base. And this is all naturally formed, this mountain and that big icy, like, spike sticking out in these. I didn't do any exterior work. And honestly, I'm not planning on doing a whole lot. I'm gonna spruce up the entrance a little bit, but that's gonna be it as far as exterior work. Because I kind of want it, like, bunkered inside of this mountain. Like, I want it to have a very cold feel, I guess. Um, now, I, I will say, like, this is a mob prison, but when we go inside, I know it doesn't look like what most people think of as a prison because I didn't want the iron bars. I didn't want the, you know, just, like, dirty stone or anything like that. I wanted to go for something that actually fit Uranus. And in my mind... Um, with it being like really, really cold temperatures and ice based, it should have kind of a clean look, right? It's kind of what I was thinking. Um, and I actually kind of went with a theme of diamond dust um, for the build. So diamond dust, basically like super cold, um, almost like snow, but it's like ice crystals that fall um, in very, very cold temperatures. And that's kind of the theme that I went for is I wanted the colors and the feel of the, of the prison um, to kind of mimic that diamond dust. So we're going to go ahead and pop on inside. Now it is not finished. It is not anywhere near finished. Hello, Enderman. You'll die. Or not. You'll teleport. Um, it's not finished by any stretch of the imagination. But if we pop on inside, like this is just temporary. <laughs> this is very, very temporary. Um, but this is the look. I am going to change these blocks. I don't want this Uranus stone just right there. But um, I haven't. It's, it's taken so long. <laughs> <laughs> to get this done. Um, I did actually make an RF Tools uh, builder and a clearing quarry to do this. And now we'll go over those later um, because we're going to use them for our RF Tools dimensions. But it was a lot to clear out, so I went ahead and just made a clearing quarry. Um, but if we come down here, this is totally unfinished as well. These are going to be steps coming down. And there's actually going to be some side rooms. Like I'm thinking off in that direction is going to be kind of like a warden's office. And I'm probably going to put some of those aliens in here um, to have them kind of moving about. By the way, this this flowing down, that's actually the water um, that spawns on Uranus. So, um, but if we head on down, we have this nifty this nifty room here. And if you look down, it's basically prisons going all the way down, prison cells. Now, I haven't actually built any cells on this floor yet. I just built a couple example cells. They're not totally finished out yet. We don't have our draconic grinders and stuff. Um, so I haven't got those fully built out. Now, some of these are going to be special utility purposes, like we're going to have one that just gets zombie heads, right? Because zombies, when you kill them, they haven't been dropping zombie heads. Now, it could be due to the fact that we've been, well, we've been killing them with diamond spikes. So um, I'm assuming, I'm going to try it out with a draconic uh, grinder, but if it doesn't work, then we're going to set up a separate setup for getting zombie heads. But this is kind of like what I want for the sales. And... These two slots, like right there and right there, are going to be Draconic Grinders um, that come out. And then the mobs are going to spawn in this section here in front of the grinders and get, you know, get killed. And then the items get sent elsewhere. So, that's kind of what I've been working on for a very long time. And this is all, like, packed ice. Uh, at first, it was funny because at first I started building with ice, right? And I had this glowstone here. And I started build, building with ice, and then I was building around the room here and building the floor. And then when I came around, like, full circle, all my ice had melted, so I just had, like, water everywhere. So I had to use our open block sponges to clean it all up, and it was a mess. <laughs> but anyways, uh, basically what happens is it goes down, and there's more steps here that lead down. Um, and then, you know, it's just mimicked floors all the way down until you get to this floor. Uh, by the way, the FPS in here does drop. It goes to like 50-ish when you're moving. Uh, I think just because of the amount of stuff that's going on in this. 
Um, but then there's like a you know a staircase here that comes down. This is all that frozen water as well, and uh, then it's going to lead off to I'm thinking like high security cells or something like that back there, um, kind of at the bottom of the prison. And I figure we'll probably put like we'll probably get into some of those turrets and set those up along the wall to look like you know kind of like a secure prison. Um, but I didn't want to go with like that dirty prison feel with the iron bars that most people. Um, do when they do a prison. I wanted something that kind of matched Uranus, kind of matched that icy cold um, theme that I was going for, right? Because honestly, I think a prison in Uranus, uh, it wouldn't be iron bar. I mean, <laughs> it just wouldn't be that stuff, you know? So I kind of wanted the color scheme and stuff to be a bit calmer. Um, but, you know, with the temperature that would be here on Uranus, it would be super cold. So it would be kind of a horrible prison to be stuck in. Um, but still look look nice on the inside and everything. Um, so I hope you guys like it. Personally, I love the color scheme, um, but you know maybe I'm biased. Maybe that's just my opinion. But uh, personally, I quite I quite like it so far. But I've got you know I've got a ton of work to finish on the walls and stuff like that. But uh, so far, oh by the way, this is just a Corporea crystal cube from Batania. So that's all that is. Um, but yeah, it's not actually connected to anything it's just kind of there for decoration and i'm going to have ones on each wall basically so like theoretically you would hit this and would like open the cell up and or something you know just <clears throat> just for decoration um but anyways there's nothing in there there's no spawners or anything yet we'll get to that down the road once we have power sorted so on that note let's head on over to jupiter we're going to go ahead and jump into what we're going to be doing today because we have quite a bit planned for today um now, Jupiter itself, it's weird coming from, like, icy Uranus to, like, molten Jupiter. <laughs> um, but as far as Jupiter goes, I haven't really built out anything. I've really spent so long on Uranus working on stuff, as well as doing some Nether Star um, seed leveling. They're not done yet, but they're, like, in the... kind of like the 5 to 7 range. So, I'm getting there. Um, but... Uh, after last episode, I actually spent a bit of time playing around with this and doing a bit of reading and stuff like that. The Reddit post that I originally read was incorrect. Um, a little bit, you know, it's kind of like scroll through, scroll through, and all the text. And then finally I found where, okay, this is wrong, you know. And I know Xavier pointed out, pointed out a little bit later on, like after the last episode, but... Uh, I was doing a bit of testing, and basically all the redstone has to be carbon, but the exterior then is draconium. Okay, so we're actually not far. I went ahead and got a bunch of carbon farmed. I actually think we have quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> we've still got carbon coming in. Uh, 2,627 uh, 2, carbon at the moment. I've been running that miner like crazy. So we are all set on carbon, and I went ahead and replaced all the redstone with carbon. So now all we have to do is add the draconium to this. So let's grab our draconium blocks. Don't want the draconic cores. We will use those a little bit later on, though. And we'll go ahead and get this built out the rest of the way. Um, let me get my wand out, actually. But last episode, we were so close to having it done. <laughs> so I do apologize. I was so ready to get this sorted and get the turbines turned on and stuff. I mean... Like I said, I've got a few things turned off at the moment, but after this episode, I'll be able to turn everything back on. Um, also, this episode will be a world download, of course, so that will be up in the description down below. Also, I did a bit of reading and or research and actually to unlock Draconic Evolution, uh, Lambda. What you have to do is it's in Zeta. Yeah, in Zeta, you have to do the Power Armor quests. So pretty much finish out this bottom section uh, for the most part, and that's how you unlock Draconic Evolution. Which is a very interesting pathway, but I, I, at the same time, I guess you have to get glowing mangaloids, so it kind of makes sense. Um, Alright, so that should be built out. Shift right... Uh, no, I missed a couple pieces, didn't I? Actually, it looks like I'm low on Draconium. I must have... Uh, I don't think it's in here. 
Now, I must have dropped a block or something last time. I Actually, I think before I had extra blocks. So apparently I dropped a few, I think. But it's not really a big, big, big deal. After I read that in the... Okay, we've got something made. After I read that, uh, you know, that post on the power storage multi-block, I went and I looked inside of the... I went and I looked inside the config, and I, I assumed that it was that too, because when I looked in the config, it listed uh, number seven on there, um, you know, alongside where it said, like, carbon was the primary block, and I'd misread it. It actually was the metadata that was listed there, and I misread it and thought it said seven, and I was like, okay, well, that's bedrock, so they must be right, you know, and <laughs> I just didn't didn't think about it. Um, but then afterwards, I was like testing around. I was like, I was trying to build it with Bedrock. And I was like, this is not working either. Uh, we're going to shift right click that. And there we go. At long last, we have our energy core. And this actually works out perfectly. It's right above my head. Yeah, that's perfect. And we can look in there. We have no power in this thing at the moment. Um, so now what we need to do is we actually get to get to connect our turbines and start up our reactor, finish our reactor start it up, connect our turbines, start them up, um, and all that fun stuff. So, let's go ahead. I should have my drum of jelly cryothium. Do we have, a, like, a floodgate of some sort by chance? Yes, BC Factory floodgate. I think I'm probably going to get that, I think. I like the new immersive engineering ones more, honestly, but uh, that's okay. All right, so let me go over here. We're going to grab iron gear. There we go. There's our floodgate. And then let me get a conduit. All right, so let's... Uh, how much cyanide am I up to, by the way? 27,000. Okay. I didn't really bother making any more plutonium since last episode. I need to, but I haven't, I haven't done it. Um, also... You guys left a lot of really great comments on the Project E, you know, question. Um, I did read through all those. I, ha I know I haven't gotten everything responded to. I've been I've been behind, honestly. I've been having issues with Craft of the Titans. It's been acting up, and I just haven't been all caught up on things, so I do apologize about that. Actually, let me get um, a couple things I'm going to need here. Um, I'm going to need the reactor. I haven't set up the reactor fluid outputs yet. So altogether we've got six turbines. We're going to need 12 um, reactor coolant ports. Go ahead and order 11 more of those. But you guys did leave a lot of good comments. I think I've figured out what we're going to do with that. We're actually going to use Project E. Um, we're going to try to avoid using it too extensively. Um, but to keep from just lagging the whole pack to death, um, I do think we're going to go with that. Because, honestly, doing the math, um, I know me and Xavier were talking about it on Discord. I could build a reactor, um, a rather large reactor, that's nothing but Eulorium fuel rods. It would be very, very expensive, but we could build it. And it would be like, you know, an 18 by 18 by 18 with just nothing but Eulorium fuel rods. And it would create like a few cyanide every second. Okay, which is great, but even still, with one of those running constantly, just to make, um, you know, a couple infinity ingots, it would take like a month of one reactor running, not including making the plutonium. So there, you know, you need two reactors, and when you build those big reactors, of course, one of those is going to be, you know, a kind of heavy on your gameplay. <laughs> And then you build two of them, possibly more, if you don't want to wait a month. And we're going to try to avoid making it too much of a waiting game, um, if we can. So, anyways, we've got our reactor coolant ports. So, let's go shut off our reactor. Let's uh, deactivate. And then we're going to head on inside of it. And do just a little bit of cleanup work on the inside. Adding those reactor ports. Um... So we're going to put one right over here that connects to this uh, turbine fluid port. <clears throat> and 
And then we're going to put another one over here that connects to this reactor uh, turbine port. And then we'll put like two right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put in all the ones that this is ever going to have. So that just that way we never have to deactivate it um, or bother with any of that. It's just we can set it up, have it running, and then when we plug up the other turbines, just plug it right up, you know. Okay. There we go. And now we need to set these. Let's see. Blue is water. And that's water output. Red. Let me get a wrench. Here. And basically red connects to red. Blue connects to blue. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing over here. Blue and blue. Red and red. Okay, because red is hot, that's your hot liquid, your steam. Blue is the cooler liquid, that's your water. Um, so with the turbine, it's outputting, and the reactor's inputting here. And over here, the reactor's outputting, and the turbine is inputting. So, alright. And now what we need to do is we actually need to flood this thing. And what would be the best way? I think if we just put it, like, right here to start with, and we'll put a that, but... This so extract always active. There we go. It's going to start putting down jelly cryothium. We definitely don't want to stand in that. Really, I could put it up higher. I think. Yeah. Let me let me go ahead and put it up higher. One nice thing about this jelly cryothium is it does uh, it does drop. So. I think we could put it, I think we could put it right here. Don't quote me on this, but I think so. And we'll try that. Because I think it measures the blocks beneath it. Into the sides of it. Alright, let me get some turbine glass. Because we are going to need a little bit of that. Not much. I've pretty much filled in most of the stuff uh, thus far. But... Like right here, for example, there's two cut out so I can get in here. Basically just to move around inside of this. But really, I guess we don't really need that anymore. I think everything in these is installed. Everything's ready to go. So we'll go ahead and just clean that up. And then on the other side, and then we're going to go pop over and get our power transfer made, I think. That's all good. Let's see, that's still steadily pumping out. It's going to take a little while to fill that up. Um, so let's, actually, let's just go over here. And we are going to want to get ourselves, okay, no, we haven't made any of these yet. I get confused because we were, we've all, we're also using these on, uh, Craft of the Titans right now. Um, so I know we've made them on Craft of the Titans, I just couldn't remember if we've made them on here or not. Alright, so we are going to want advanced energy relays. Um, these require four energy relays, so let's get, uh, let's start out with making like eight. And then the advanced energy relay, that takes wyvern cores. There's one, and, oops, wrong, uh, wrong craft there. We've got a little bit of that nether essence, I think it's like 30 something. And then our advanced energy relays, I don't really care for using the lower tier ones, honestly. Um, then we're also going to want two of these advanced energy transceivers. Um, honestly, I might just do two more. We don't really need wireless here. Um, I think, honestly, I think just getting like four of these advanced energy transceivers for right now, that's going to be plenty. Um, and then we're also going to need the crystal wrench. That's not the name of it. It's a crystal binder. That's what it is. Okay, that's pretty cheap to make. We'll go ahead and grab that. And now we should be all set. Once this is filled up, which it's almost there. It's just filling in the last few blocks at the moment. And we'll go ahead and connect up an advanced energy transceiver onto this. We'll connect one onto the other one. And then let me get those energy pylons. And just a few pieces of glass here. And I think this is done. 
Oh, we're done with that. So let's get a few pieces of cobble just so I can place this. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have the energy pylons come out in this direction. And we'll have them... Um, honestly, these... I'm just going to put on the bottom of this. Let's see. The arrows are pointing in. That means it should be going into the uh, energy core. We'll put the glass down. And we'll right click that. We'll say input. Yeah, it's blue is input, orange is output, or the arrow is pointing in. That's supposed to signify, I guess, the energy cube um, in, in and out like that. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll just connect up an advanced energy transceiver onto the pylon. We'll put it onto the side. Oh, yeah. We're going to shift right click the crystal binder to mode change. Right click this. We're going to say this is going to... Output five times transfer. This one's going to be input five times transfer. And then once again over here, input five times transfer. Um, oh, I'm actually, I need one piece of reactor glass. Threw it all back. Then we're going to shift right click to bind mode, function bind. Um, right click that. We're going to connect it to this one. And then just right click this one. Right click it to that one. Okay, so now we should be able to get energy into our energy core. And so now the main thing is it looks like some of that jellied cryothium is not placed. Okay, that seems to be everything. Um, yeah, it is all steel now. And I don't think we have any spill over the side. Nope. Okay. So we're going to put this last piece of reactor glass on. There we go. We have a reactor. And now we can actually start this up. You can see it's actually cooling down right now. And you'll notice instead of producing power, it's producing liquid. Okay. Um, <clears throat> basically it does that because we have reactor coolant ports on it. So now we just have to give this some water. And so let's go ahead and load this thing down with a little bit of water. Uh, let me get a sink. Actually, I don't have a bucket of water. I'm just going to grab... <clears throat> Yeah, this isn't running right now. I'm just going to grab this infinite water block for right now. And we'll go ahead, connect it up right there. There we go. It's producing steam. We're going to go ahead and activate the reactor. That's going to fill up with steam very, very quickly. And now if I pull this off, let's see how much water. We're capped on steam right now. We don't want to be exactly capped on steam. Okay, and these are capped on steam too. Steam. I need to get rid of some of the steam. Or no, we, we're good because the water's low. That's the main thing is we're going to need, we don't want it all filled because we don't want either one of them have to, having to wait on the other, basically. Um, so water's right here, steam's right here. That's perfect. And then these should both be filled with steam. We're going to go ahead, max flow rate's 2,000. We want that. We're going to consume 2,000 millibuckets per tick. And then basically... These being butted up right against each other, the fluid import and fluid outports, um, that's perfect. They will transfer between each other. Um, over here, we're going to say uh, vent close, preserve all exhaust fluids. Turbine will slow or halt fluid intake if exhaust fluid tank is full. We're going to go ahead and hit that. Um, and actually, the coils on this, I'm going to go ahead and change these over. I should have a redstone control on the back. Oh, yeah, I didn't put one in there, did I? Okay. That's fine. Because, honestly, I don't want these changing, really. But, um... I think we're going to set the fuel insertion to... 62%. Shift and Alt. So, I'm just going to go ahead and manually set these. Now, I will say that it's, this is somewhat wasteful at the moment. I just don't want to have to change them later, and I'm not really worried about... Um, the usage of Eulorium, but the reason I'm setting them at 62% is that's optimal um, for my tests to run six turbines, which is our, you know, that's our goal is all six of these turbines up and running. Possibly six more. If I do, I'll change the fuel insertion or uh, the control rod insertion. Um, 
but 62 is good to run all six turbines. Right now we're only running two. You could probably run something like 80. Whoops. Uh, you could probably run something like 80, and it would be good, but uh, I'm going ahead and just setting these. I don't really care about the waste of Eulorium. Honestly, I could use the Cyanide anyways. And any kind of block where you have saving that gives Eulorium, I, I really don't concern myself too much with optimal settings because it's like you're getting Eulorium. Generally, you're getting it faster than your reactor is going to eat through it. This reactor does not eat through a lot of Eulorium. <clears throat> That's going to steadily drop. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and engage our turbines. Um, vent all exhaust, vent close, activate turbine. There we go. That's going to start spinning up. Let's pop on over to the next one. We're going to say vent closed. That way, just so you don't waste any water. We don't want to waste any water or any steam. We want everything to come in here. Basically, the steam get burned up. And then when steam's burned up, it becomes water. And then it transfers it back to the reactor, recreates steam, and sends it back to the turbine. Okay, so activate turbine. There we go. And so now both of those are up and going. They are going to take a very long time to charge up. Like, well, not not a very long time, but they're going to take a little while. Because we got to get our rotor speed up. Um, but right now we're producing 37, 38,000 RF per tick, 40,000. Um, they are going to produce a lot of power once they're fully built or fully up and running. And we should be able to see... Actually, the energy is not pulling out of this. I set this up wrong, didn't I? I am inputting. Okay, you know what it might be? These pylons are kind of finicky sometimes. If they're... I think it's... I have it backwards here. If the pylon is below the center of the reactor, then the glass needs to be placed above it. So let me do that real quick. Um... Up that. I'm going to put the pylon like right here. Go ahead and remove that. Then we'll place the glass on top of it. Right click that and then we'll put the transceiver down right here. So I think that's what's going on is the pylon's not connecting. Um, and then we'll say you output five times transfer. And bind that. There we go. Now it's getting power. Okay. That's what it was. And there we go. Okay. So now we can say we've already got over 100 million in this. Granted, it's pulling the buffers out of the turbines right now. Um, but the turbines should be producing... I feel like these are buffed in this pack by a lot. <laughs> the power has to be buffed in this. Because right now we're producing 320,000 RF. Um, honestly, by the time these things are fully sped up, these are probably going to be producing about a half million a piece. I bet. Well, they're actually dropping down right now. Yeah, because they're out of that prime area. But the thing is, they're dropping down, but then they're going to go back up and... Once I hit the rotor speed up to about 1,800, um, a little bit shy of that. And you can see this thing should be keeping up, no problem on steam. This one is, yeah, it's going up. Oh yeah, this thing is setting beautiful on steam. It's energy buffers feel, but that's fine. It's not actually producing any energy right now, it's just producing steam. Um... But yeah, you can see it's only consuming about 4.7 uh, millibuckets per tick of Eulorium. And of course, each Eulorium ingot is 1,000 millibuckets. So it could run, and with these settings, it could run all six of our turbines. So we'd be producing easily over a million per tick with this, with the settings that uh, this pack has and stuff. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to go, I'm going to edit some footage while I wait for this to uh, get up to maximum speed. And then we'll come back in just a minute. I'm going to pop on over to the overworld so I don't waste a bunch of oxygen. But um, and I'll tell you what, this infinite water, we don't actually need. Once you have that initial water in, I may have to add just a tad bit of water um, whenever we go to plug up the other, you know, the other steam turbines. But um, it really just depends. As long as you have it about halfway filled, I usually, I suggest don't fill it up all the way. 
because what will happen is it'll get backed up on steam it won't be producing and then it's trying to move water in and then if water builds up in these and it can't move it in quick enough then they slow down and it's just a big headache so yeah the power's starting to go back up right now as it approaches optimal speed so and let's see where we're at on power right now we are at two billion <laughs> all right beautiful stuff okay so let's head on back i'm gonna edit the footage we're gonna let these get caught like get sped up to maximum speed and then we'll be back we have some other stuff i want to get into this episode so all right so let's head on back over and see where we're at on power um i would let this run maybe 20 minutes something like that um we are at 63 64 about to be 64 billion rf okay so that's i mean as you can tell that's why i didn't want to just pump it into vibrant capacitor banks because we had what nine billion storage i think which is a lot but it's not enough for these reactors to run so um honestly that that two trillion will be probably filled by next episode <laughs> so um and let's see our rotors our turbines are probably eh, about maximum speed uh you can see that we're producing 673,000 rf per tick per turbine um, at the moment <laughs> so uh we are good we are good on power because before before this episode we were producing i think it was you know we had those uh three or four uh diesel engines running we got a few solar panels that are producing like eight thousand a piece we were maybe producing like 150,000 rf per tick right very very minimal in comparison to this because now we're producing um 1.2 uh million so our power troubles are over for the time being we will have power troubles again especially once we start plugging up all those spawners and doing all that stuff but now we've reached a point where we can move into some really big like heavy power hog type stuff um, without too much concern about um, the amount of power production that we have and things of, things of that nature all right now let's set up another energy pylon we're just gonna put it like right uh actually i'm gonna put it right over here throw that down i may clean i may change these a little bit uh we'll see as i get more of this this building built out i just haven't uh haven't gotten it all built out yet i've got the core done that's the most important part <laughs> so go ahead and throw that on we're gonna leave this one on orange this one's going to be output we're gonna throw down an advanced energy transceiver right here uh, let's go ahead and set this to mode change it is going to be input five times transfer and then what we can do is let's get let's actually get one more um, honestly I'm probably gonna go ahead and make a wireless uh, relay for this next part it's not it's advanced wireless transceiver um, we're gonna go ahead and make one of these I don't this honestly right now I could do with just a standard uh, oops, a standard one it doesn't have to be wireless necessarily but I'm gonna go ahead and make a wireless one because we're gonna use it um, if I can ever figure out what I'm doing here Oh, I love these cheap ender pearls. Like after coming from like Craft of the Titans, where ender pearls are like really expensive in comparison, it's it's nice coming over to this and then being a lot cheaper. Uh, but for right now, this is just temporary placement. We're gonna put our advanced wireless transceiver down right there, because basically I'm gonna have a room that handles um, all of the energy transfer over like dimensions and stuff like that. But for right now, we're just gonna set it up right here because we are being. Um, lazy right now uh, we'll set it a quantum entangler porter right here we're going to say that this is um we're just going to call it extra power that's for now and i don't know you know once i get all this stuff sorted i mean that's kind of what i'm waiting on i've been waiting on this right here whoops energy input i've been waiting on this right here to actually get i'm going to go back through and redo all my quantum entangler porters all my test racks i want them connected to this building specifically and we'll lose the power that little measly vibrant capacitor bank setup we'll lose that because we don't really need it 
Oh, this is set to bind mode. We'll right click that, right click this. Devices are linked. This now has power on the extra power line. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to pop on over to Mercury. And the reason that we're here is because we have some machines that are actually suffering uh, from power loss when we have a lot of metals coming in, basically. Um, it looks like they're all running okay right now. But uh, earlier I came by, it was like it was like between episodes, I came by um, to check and see how Carbon was doing. And I noticed that some of these weren't running, they had run out of power. And basically that's what I want to fix right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up just another quantum entangler porter. Uh, for right now, we're going to plug it up just under the floor here. Um, right there is fine. We're going to say that this is an extra power connection uh, set. And then we're going to say that you output energy on each side auto eject. Okay, so now this has that massive amount of power coming in. Honestly, I'm going to have to upgrade conduits. What I'll probably do is just move over to nothing but Draconic Evolution conduits once we have a little bit more... Uh, once I'm a little bit more comfortable spending a lot of our Draconic Evolution stuff. I mean, right now I don't want to just blow through it on plugging everything up with wireless connections. Uh, but that's because I don't have hundreds of uh, glowing mangaloy and stuff right now, um, which is actually very going to be very very easy to automate. We'll probably automate it here in just a moment. Um, but now that that's plugged up, power is sorted. We're good on power. We're happy. Yay. Okay. So let's head on back to the overworld. And now I want to do some more fun stuff, more fun things. Um, let me check this actually. And I can't remember because this pack has that. Uh, you can't resurrect the dragon vanilla way. Okay, it's four charged draconium. Uh, we're going to go resurrect the ender dragon, actually. Because I want one more dragon heart. So, let's get uh, four draconium blocks. We're going to need to get those charged. Just set them in here for right now. They're going to start charging up. Uh, and then I'm also going to want... Which, honestly, until my power gets sorted, like I change all the Tesseracts and stuff, I'm going to try to get that done between episodes. But until that's done, I mean, we're not going to be using a whole lot of power from our new setup, but that's going to take a bit of time to get everything changed over uh, and everything redone. Uh, we're also going to need Glowstone. Give me... I think it's just four blocks of Glowstone. Yeah, um, four obsidian, four diamond blocks. Quartz pillars are just like that. Then I think we just need the resurrection stone, right? Yeah, once these are all charged up, I'm going to have to throw them in and get them charged. Um, so for our resurrection stone, this thing takes four mob souls and then it takes four wyvern cores. E. Okay, I'm actually going to need some more nether essence. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to grab this. Because at first I was thinking, well, we could pull these up, but then, like, right now I'm I'm using those. <laughs> so I want to get just some more Awakened Draconium real quick, and at the same time we can get into the Resurrection Ritual. Not a whole lot to it, but um, how many cores do I have left? Okay, not very many. I'm going to have to make some more here in just a minute. Then we'll get our Resurrection Stone. How many Mob Souls do we have out of curiosity? Enderman, that's it. Okay, we're gonna have to get those better automated than what we have right now, but um, okay, well, hey, that should be everything that we need. So let's pop on over to the end. And I just realized, wait, we can't go just yet. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, pop over here, get these things charged up real quick. There we go, and now we can go to the end. I actually kind of wonder if my, like, stack of glowing mangaloy that was going is done yet. And basically we just need to set this up kind of close to the uh, center of this little island. Like the, what, zero, zero or whatever. Um, it has to be, I can't exactly remember, it's like a hundred and some odd blocks. 
from the center of this. We're just going to set it up like, like it shows. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as the picture. The pillars can actually come out a little bit farther and and whatnot. They just kind of have to be within so many blocks of this. All the details are in here, so I'm not going to read through all of that. Um, diamond block, diamond block, and then we'll put, these are too high. We'll set our charged draconium on there. And then shift right click and it's going to start running. And basically it's going to respawn. I tell you what, I need a bow. You can tell how, much, how concerned I am with the ender dragon. And then we'll get some arrows. Okay. Oh, does it not respawn? I could have swore it respawned the... Uh... Oh yeah, there we go. Maybe it doesn't respawn all of them, but it respawns some of them or something I can't remember it's been it's been a very long time since I did the dragon resurrection ritual in 1.7 honestly because like aside from ozone like I don't really play 1.7 packs anymore and honestly probably after ozone I probably won't play 1.7 packs anymore either um, just because 1.10 it's a bit smoother. I like the way it loads um, stuff, so you can build bigger without it being as laggy. Um, with the way that it, it renders only what you can see and stuff like that, I like that that system a bit better and uh, and whatnot. Plus, there's some nice added features and everything as well, uh, with the fact that you can resurrect dragons in vanilla and all that good stuff. Okay, there we go. There's our dragon hearts. And we'll go ahead and grab all this stuff just because we can. Interdimensional crafting sack. Which, that's for getting an infinity booster card. Which, we've gotten them before when we killed the wither. But I guess we hadn't unlocked everything needed for the achievement or whatever. Okay. Oh, it doesn't break the obsidian. That's nifty. And I guess we'll head on back through... I do want this egg. Do I have any torches somewhere? I'm going to throw all this stuff back into the system. That. 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 We don't need that. We don't need that. Okay. And there's our dragon heart. Whooped. Or dragon egg, not dragon heart. <laughs> and of course it spawns me way over here, that's fine. Go ahead and take uh take this system here. Been a little while since I've taken this actually. I think the last time was when we ran into that like weird bug with something where it kept dropping me. I can't remember what it was from, but it kept dropping me through and like killing me, I can't remember. Something like that. I remember it was, it was super frustrating because the last time I rode this system, I just associated it with frustration, <laughs> I think. Or something. I don't know. But anyways, um, since we've got that, let's get uh, four more draconium blocks. There's another stack of glowing mangaloi. There's another stack of it. We'll get that up and going. And then, let's see, TNT, redstone torches... Charge Draconium. I think that's everything, right? So let's go get this turned into Awakened Draconium real quick. And we're going to get new tools soon. Like, we're going to start getting into Draconic Evolution stuff before too long, I think. Now, I will say that in this pack, it's a little bit more expensive. And actually, out of curiosity, what all do the tools take? I know they're expensive. Looks like mainly Awakened Draconium stuff, though. Some Demon Steel, not super high. Okay, and that stuff's actually pretty standard. Awesome. And I keep mixing up. I have different buttons for Vein Miner on Craft of the Titans and on here, so. 
All right, so we got our Awakened Draconium blocks, and these are pretty much, I can do whatever with them. Honestly, we're probably going to get Nether Stars up and going once I get these 10 10 10s, which will probably be between episodes. I'll build out a building, kind of like what we have for the Capacitor Seeds, and then we'll get this really up and going um, for real. Okay, so... Let's see, for... The first thing I want to go for this episode is the dire crafting table. And this requires, this stuff is all easy. Um, the awakened core, four of those, so we're going to need 16 wyvern cores. That's a little bit uh, expensive. I'm going to have to get some more blue gem. I made some earlier, but I'm probably getting close to being emptied out because we haven't set up the crusher yet. Anyways, give me just a minute here to get a few more nether stars. And there we go. We have 36 nether stars. Because I got to looking, we're going to need more than just 20. Um, I ended up, I used our Awakened Draconium to expand this to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, they're not fully leveled seeds or anything like that. I didn't worry about crossbreeding right this second. Okay, so now, now we can get what we need to get. Uh, first up, well actually I'll just pull it up as the dire crafting table which I will say we don't have anything particular we're going for this episode I just want to get the dire crafting table maybe make something um, for those of you that have been wanting me to get into dire crafting soon um, this way we've got at least at least our feet wet more than anything um, at the moment so let's get oh, I'm gonna need a bunch more of those uh, there's our first four wyvern cores we're actually gonna need <laughs> These are expensive. We're going to need four Awakened Cores. Oh, we're going to need so many Draconic Cores. It's ridiculous. Okay. I'm out of Glowing Mangaloid. Really? I still don't have enough. Okay. Maybe we're not going to get uh, our Dire Crafting up and going. This is at 45. And I know you guys commented about the dungeon. We will do. We'll do the Neptune Dungeon. Um, a bit later on, so. And we will automate Glowing Mangaloy in just a moment, because we're going to need it automated. Nope, I'm going to grab this, since I'm going through, because I'll need Nether Stars a lot moving forward. Once we get that automated, it's going to be nice. Like, once we get a little farming area set up for it, um, that is going to help a ton, because we will have more Nether Stars than we know what to do with. And we actually might get into RF tools in the next couple episodes, too. Because since we have power done, now we can actually start moving into other things, you know. Um, so for our cores, there's seven more. It's as much as I can get right now. And then we'll be able to get seven. Okay, we're about to be able to make two awakened cores. So we're still a little ways off from that. Um... Okay, so let's make a uh, fluid transposer. Let's, I'm just going to make a new one because that one is not resonant. Actually, this one is resonant. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to just pull this stuff out. And we'll go ahead and grab that fluid transposer. And what I'm going to do, I think... Let's see, how much rich slag do I have? Okay, I have plenty. See, rich slag is all caught up now, so that's great. Um, and to make mangaloi... I believe it's really just rich slag. I mean, I think we have everything pretty much automated. Yeah, steel and rich slag. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are going to just set it up in here. Um, we're going to have basically a fluid transposer that sets like right, right here, I think. We'll say that you can insert from the bottom. And then we're going to get a... Crafting card. Let's get one of these. And basically I just want this thing running constantly, making as much uh, glowing mangaloy as we can. Let's also get... I thought I had a frame drawer still around here. There's our fluid transposer. We'll say that you can insert from the back. As well as the front. Um, okay, actually our closest connection is up here it looks like. 
Then we'll put the export bus on the back. Uh, crafting card right there. We're going to say that you export. Um, it's not glowing, is it? It's Mangaloy. There we go. You export that. And then this is light blue cable. Now I should have plenty of connections, I should think. Yeah, it's only three of eight channels. So we'll just connect this up. Like that. And then let me also grab a piece of glowing mangaloy. We'll get our drawers set up and configured. There we go. And then let me get my key. So we can lock that in. Man, this FPS is the bomb. And we're going to output out the top. Hopefully, as we progress, that FPS will get better as we move some things out of the overworld. You know, I set up this big base thinking, oh, well, we'll automate a lot here. Now, <laughs> I think we've reached our cap on automation in the overworld for the most part. Like, it's just getting, it's getting bad. Okay, and we're just going to put our ender tank now. This is the one that's connected up with the uh, Zerothium, Zephyr and Zerothium. And we'll just have it pump up through there, and it's getting that stuff. Now, we have room for augments in this, so we are going to speed it up. I am going to pull out um, automatic transfer out of a device. We're going to leave that one in there, um, that one in there. We will pull out this one, though. We don't need the redstone control at all. And then let's go craft this up at thermal. And I'm going to want the... These right here. First up, secondary reception coil. Um, let me get that. Give me the secondary reception coil. Then I want the overclock modular gearbox. So there's that, and then we are going to want the space-time flux unifier. Um, I'm assuming we don't have any of these. No, we don't have any of these crafted at the moment. And this one requires more pyrothium. That's fine. There we go. And then we have one extra slot. We're going to use it for the... Um, isn't there one that reduces... Destroys excess, increases food output. That's the cobble gen. That's all dynamo stuff. Okay, so maybe that's all I can really put into this. I was thinking there was one for energy reduction, but... I don't know, because see, it's been totally revamped in 1.10. Okay, we're going to put these all into this. And, oh yeah, we're going to have to give this power. It's got to have power. It's not getting power. Um. Okay, I'll tell you what. For right now, which this will get changed over... Like, once we get Draconic Evolution stuff up and going, like, change it over that then, I guess. But for right now, we're just going to run some conduits just like that, just so I can have this up and going, like, right now. Okay, so that's got power, and then we just throw in our speed-ups, and now you can see it's making Glowing Mangaloy much faster. Much faster. Okay, now, realistically, we could probably give this a second and get enough of that... Um, how much blue gem do we have? 126, yeah. That's why I'm not in any rush, really, to double this. I mean, I'd li you know, I'd like to get it doubled. It's just I'm not like, gotta have it right this second. Um, because this is, I mean, this is honestly not that bad. Just to set up the miner, it gets a few hundred ore per run. And that's okay. Okay, there's 19 glowing mangaloy. We have 45. So, Draconic Cores, there's 11 more of those, Wyvern Cores, and we've got almost a stack of Nether Essence now. It actually builds up pretty quickly when you have eight plants going. Um, yeah, we're getting Mangaloy much faster now. This is great. So, I'll tell you what, we could probably get a few Awakened Cores now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and break two of these off. Because we're going to need two blocks of this. There's 18 Awakened Draconium. Which I am going to try to get some more of that built up. Maybe even between the episodes. 
well, I've got to get souls. That's the worst part is I have to get a lot of souls. Which we can automate that process once we get, you know, set it up in the prison um, very, very soon. But there's like two more. We've almost got enough for three of our cores. Then our awakened cores are just like that. Go ahead and set this up. There's two of those. And now in addition to make our dire crafting table, we're also going to need eight crystal matrix ingots. These require two nether stars each and then the diamond lattices. These are very easy to make. I'm just going to make a stack of those just because we've got plenty of diamonds. Crystal matrix ingots. The first seal. That's our, I think, our first item that we've crafted from Alvaridia. Okay. Glowing Mangaloy, we have 17. Okay. Core, let's get four more Draconic Cores. That's one more Wyvern Core. And that's one more Awakened Core. Okay, so we just need 16 more cores. Which is only like one more stack of glowing mangaloy. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay, I let it run while I was editing some footage. We have 402 glowing mangaloy now. Awesome. So let's get the remainder of our cores. We just need 16 more draconic cores. Honestly, I think we're squared away on all this stuff now. We're at that, that good point, basically. Okay, there's four wyvern cores. There is our awakened Core, and we're out of nether stars, but I have nether essence, so it's not a problem. Okay, and this is done. So there's a bit more of that, 17 more. Okay, so now we are headed to the moon to our laser setup, and we're going to get our dire crafting table made. And then it's going to be about wrapping up point because I, I just noticed it was it was pretty close. But I feel like we got a bit done. Last episode, we didn't get a whole lot done. This episode, we got a whole lot done. So I think they balance out. We got uh, dire crafting table. Okay, so four of those, double compressed crafting table, ME controller, and eight crystal matrix ingots makes us a dire crafting table. Now, there's also the automatic one, right? What is this one? <laughs> okay, that one's going to be a little ways away, to say the least. Just a little bit, because these are really expensive. Just a bit. How much power does this thing actually take? Eight million. Okay. I need to go back through and fix all these oxygen sealers, because, like, this place was sealed. Oxygen was good, and now it's not. Uh, oh, you know what I think it is? I think it's because the configs were changed. So... My panes and stuff probably aren't sealed. That's probably why it's not working. Because when I updated it, I uh, let it go over the configs. Overwrite the configs. So that's probably why it's not working. Okay. No, give me that. Oh, yeah, I don't get the, uh, the stuff. Okay, that's fine. I've got mana class. Speaking of, I think I've got a place up there I forgot to fix before. Oh, never mind. I fixed it. Never mind. Okay. So we're going to throw that in there. Let's head on back to the overworld. And there is a, I believe there is a quest for the dire crafting table, uh, which is fine. Whenever we do that quest, we can just pick it up and replace it. I think it's uh, Moo. Yeah. Make crystal matrix ingots. We've already completed it. Also, the dire crafting table. We're done. Next up will be the Neutron Collector. It's eh, There's a little bit to it. We might get into that next episode. Um, I'm not for sure. But for right now, we're going to put our Dire Crafting Table down. I'm actually going to put it like over here, kind of away from the awesome FPS that is that section of the base. And there we go. We have our Dire Crafting Table with lots of slots for items to go in. Um, now, the first item that you're going to want to make with this, unless there's some like weird thing within this pack that some off thing that you might want to make but chances are it's going to be the neutron collector this thing is it's kind of expensive <laughs> uh most of the stuff's not too bad the compressed dark iron i believe dark iron is from pluto no eris okay 
So we're gonna have to get back into space before we can even think about the, yeah, we won't get that next episode. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but most of the stuff isn't actually that bad for the neutron collector. Um, Signalum, Plutonium, there's some Dark Clouds, um, which was a great game, by the way. Uh, conductive Iron Blocks, flux, flux Crystal Blocks, which we haven't even made any Flux Crystals yet. Crystallized Redstone, Vibrantium, um, there's HOP Graphite, uh, Solar Neutron Activator. Most, I mean, most of the stuff isn't bad. The most expensive thing, I think, on here is the Crystal Matrix ingots, so... Which really isn't that bad. At the end of the day, it's not that bad. Um, especially with these over here. I missed one. Um, not, not too, too bad, anyways. So, um, next episode, okay? Because it's, it's wrapping up point at this point. Um, next episode, we are going to take some time and switch gears for just a second and work on some quests, okay? Because, um, what is it? It's not Theta, it's, um, is it Zeta? Yeah, Zeta. I want to knock out this quest line just so that we can unlock the Draconic Evolution quest line. And then I believe Draconic Evolution unlocks Avaridia. So, um, I want to get, you know, basically get these two unlocked. Kappa, oh, yeah, I forgot about the Philosopher's Stone. Does this actually take neutrons? I don't see any. So we might work on actually crafting this next episode as well. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Um, let me see. How much? Uh, 434 Temperio. Yeah. I have one piece of seventh magnitude. <laughs> okay. I mean, really, most of this stuff is not bad. Soul Crystal, not th not terrible. Spirit Binder, not bad. I mean, that's just Gaia Spirits, Ectoplasm, Nether Star. Vibrantium, it's a little bit expensive, but at the end of the day, Solarium, Enticing Crystal, Vibrant Alloy, not that bad. It's just, I don't have it automated and I hate farming it, but it's not that bad. Thorium Rod, that's not expensive. Okay, but I don't have any Thorium Ore. Um, we may actually have to get the thorium from the Magnetocraft Crusher, Ceres Uranium. I'm not for sure. I haven't seen any thorium more, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So I'll have to take a look at that. Um, but aside from that, I mean, the rest of the stuff, Dark Steel Balls, Molecular Assemblers, Advanced PCB. I mean, most of the stuff we have automated. You know, it's mainly just the thorium rods, the Spirit Binders, the Soul Crystals, and these two are the two things that hurt the most, I think. Um... To start getting into Project E. So we might start turning our attention to that. I can't say for sure that we're going to get the Philosopher's Stone crafted. But we may turn our attention to it. I am going to set up um, probably... I might work on the base on Ceres a little bit. Which is going to be farming. Um, since we're going to do a little bit with Project E. I'm not going to go too crazy with the farms. Just because of the fact that... I mean I would have to have just crazy imaginary time blocks. And then... Multiple farming stations to keep up with the imaginary time blocks, and it would just be such a lag fest. Honestly, me personally, I hate imaginary time blocks just because, in my experience, they're just lag fest blocks. It's, it's pretty much what it is because farming in Minecraft is probably the most laggy thing that you can do. I mean, even this setup is very laggy. So, we'll probably go to Ceres, we'll set up some farms for farming up essence. That's my primary concern right now getting essence farming up and going um you know as far as far as the farming front goes i think that's the biggest concern at the moment so i'll probably i'll probably work a little bit on the Sarah's base it's not going to be huge it's mainly going to be a farm base uh for essences so we'll probably do like some large scale essences with that um imaginary time blocks we can't really make those well i mean technically we could make them but they're not cheap um, these cubic clusters, these aren't that bad. Um, steel ingots, cubic uh, crystals, and all that stuff. Um, you can actually get imaginary time blocks for EMC. But like I said, I really don't want to use a whole lot of these things. Growth pulsars, not expensive. However, compressed Gaia, that's a little bit expensive, honestly. So, um, liquid sunshine isn't that bad. I mean, none of this stuff's that bad except for the compressed Gaia. That's a little bit on the stout side. So, we'll see. 
we'll see how it goes. Um, but next episode, we're just going to kind of take some time, do some quests, do a little bit of cleanup work. Um, also, I know that we have not done, haven't even really started working through this one right here. The one for the Aether and for the Erebus. We will start that, but I'm kind of, I was kind of holding off on this, honestly, until we got to the singularities of Project Ozone. Because now that we're hitting the, the singularities, whether we do EMC or just straight up farming, more so for straight up farming, straight up farming would be terrible. Um, but regardless, it's going to be a major waiting game moving on. Um, which is going to give us plenty of time for building, but I tried to save a bit of content so it's not like, well, you know, we don't have anything really to do this episode because we're waiting on EMC for singularities or whatever. Um, so we will be doing a bit of the Erebus stuff and a bit of the Aether stuff um, before too long, once we start getting into singularities because it's going to be... It's going to be a process. And then we're also going to bust out the actual achievement book and start going through that stuff as well here very, very soon. So I've been holding off on that until we get to this point because we're, we're quickly approaching the late game Project Ozone. Okay, so from this point moving forward, it's going to be... I mean, we still got some stuff to, to go through before we really get into Avarity and get our... like really get into the bulk of it. Um, but... You know, we're approaching that point. So it's going to be a lot of actual base work and building and stuff between episodes and then and, and whatnot. So, and a lot of dire crafting. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I'm going to end it out here. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to, up to date, my bad, uh, with when new videos come out and everything. And uh, I hope to see you guys next time. Also, world download in the description below. So uh, if you're interested, be sure and check that out. And um, I, will, I will put all my stuff into a chest in the lag fest room. Okay? So all my inventory and stuff, I'll dump it off in there. Anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys then.